Have you noticed that most cars in the pursuit of better aerodynamics and efficiency are starting to look the same? Well, that is not true for this car. This is the Aptera, and it's one of the most efficient cars money can buy, and it looks like nothing else you'll see on the road. Jack was here two years ago in beautiful Southern California to drive one of these, but now fast forward two years and production intent models are coming off the line, and they believe that manufacturing and shipping to customers will happen in about a year's time. So we thought we'd come back out and give you an update on Aptera. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. Love the Fully Charged Show? Join us live in Canada this September, the South in October, and Australia and London in 2025. So with the Aptera, you gotta start with the solar panels. Up front, we have the solar on the hood. Then you have solar on the dash, by the way, you see that down there, on the roof, and of course, on the back hatch lid as well. Now, one thing that has changed from when we first saw the Aptera is that that is now glass. Before they were using a polycarbonate, but in the interest of longer lasting and better performance and scratch resistance, all those panels are gonna be glass. And it's gonna be pretty amazing. Also, here you get a good look at the mirrors. Because of US regulations, you have to have an actual physical mirror. They've got that plus cameras, which we can show you here on the inside. You've still got the full fairing wheels as before. Now this is the gamma model. So there are some changes between this and production and we'll highlight those as we go. But as you move along the back here, look at this window. And this is, as you can imagine, what was required to get that to open into the door. Speaking of doors, check this out. Opening the door, has a knock sensor right behind the logo. And you've got the actuated butterfly doors. Coming along to the back, another big change is that the hatchback opening is gonna extend all the way. I think that's probably a smart move because otherwise you're gonna scratch this up as you load things in and out. And we'll show you that here as we talk about it. So here is a production intent model and you can see here with the stamped part, this is part of the opening and extends all the way to the back. One of the things about the Aptera that caught my eye from the very beginning was their choice, even before it was a, a thing, to use the Tesla charge port, the NACS port, if you will, just because of how slim and low profile it is, it fits very well here on the tail lid. But that is actually now a thing. They were one of the early companies to petition for the US to use that charging standard. And uh, I'm really glad they did. Interestingly, the Aptera is classified as an auto cycle, which has some interesting ramifications here in the US. For example, it's closer to a motorcycle in terms of designation, which means the headlight has to be in the middle, right? You would normally on a motorcycle have the headlight right in the middle, which denotes that it's a smaller vehicle. So even though this is much larger, it has the headlights out in front. Earlier prototypes had them on the sides. And in Europe, that might be the opposite because I believe they have to have the lights out as far as possible. So instead of individual hub motors on each wheel, they've decided to go with this, a Vitesco EMR3, 150 kilowatt electric motor. Now this will be mounted inboard right around here with two drive axles to either wheel. Part of the reason why is this is a tried and true motor and controller and inverter that's been used on millions of vehicles already. So when you already have a spaceship and carbon fiber monocoque tubs and so much other innovation going on, the last thing you need is to overdo it. So I think starting with this kind of makes sense. This is 150 kilowatt, as I mentioned. And interestingly, I realized that this inverter design is what made it difficult before. Also with having hub motors, you'd have two different inverters, two different controllers. And this just kind of simplifies that entire process. All wheel drive models in the future might have a hub motor for the back, but for the launch edition, you're looking at the powertrain. And for a vehicle that weighs 2,200 pounds, this should be quite peppy. So Chris, from when last we met a couple years ago and we drove one of those, what's changed and how's it going? Yeah, you know, this was made uh, very much the same way that I made my boats, resin infused composites. So you've got an A-side mold and you lay your material in the mold and then you put a bag on top and then you put it under vacuum pressure. And basically you inject resin in one side of the part and it flows to the other. Uh, the problem is it has to stay under bag for four or five hours. So the cycle time is not great. So when we got you know, our first 10,000 orders, we said, well, we better start investigating new methods on how to do this composites, or we're gonna have hundreds of thousands of square feet full of molds in Southern California, which is very expensive, and you're gonna have a lot of labor content 
to actually produce these parts. So we, we started looking and uh, Akosh, our um, uh, VP of uh, engineering, went out and found a process called uh, carbon fiber SMC, uh, carbon fiber sheet molding compound is what it stands for. And instead of just an A side mold, we lay in the, the material, you've got an A and a B side mold. So they clamp together like a waffle iron and you put in thermal set resin and carbon fiber goo. And when you close the waffle iron, everything squishes out and in about eight minutes you have a part. So this is really conducive to our big parts as well. Uh, but it's pretty cool to see the process and see how big the parts are and just know that you know, it can match our tack time. So if we want to build you know, 50, 100,000 a year, we can do it with this process. Got it, you want to show us what you're talking about? Yeah. I, think I so, see it over here in the corner. So the, the green parts evolved into these white and black parts. And the black parts are carbon fiber SMC. And uh, you'll hear it in the supercar world. Uh, watch the edges, they're kind of sharp, they're sure. trimmed. Um, but in the supercar world, they call it forged composites. So when you see it in um, BMWs and Ferraris and Lamborghinis, uh, they put a clear coat on it so it's a little shinier and they call it forged composites. Um, but it's just a beautiful looking carbon fiber, uh, short strand part uh, that's really tough. Uh, this is a great example of the technology because usually for a big hatch like this, you'd have an inner and an outer in aluminum or steel and you'd clamshell them together and then you'd weld the seams. Right. Uh, this is just one one part, but it's got A and B surfaces. You've got you know you've got features for like the the seal. Uh, you've got bonding uh, ripples, so the uh, solar panel can glue onto it nicely. And this is it. This is the whole part, one one piece and, go and done. So from a couple of hours to get a panel out to a couple of minutes. To, to eight minutes. The smaller the part, the quicker it is. So the small parts come out in you know three or four minutes. The big parts, it takes time for the heat to get into the thermoset resin, uh, so they take longer. But this is the world record holder for the largest carbon fiber SMC part. And uh, it's not just a big part like, a, like the Toyota truck bed. Uh, this is a very complex part. It really is. It's got a lot of features. It does a lot of things, uh, not only on the bottom side to hold a lot of things underneath, but also the top side to, to run wires and um, you know, mount the seats and have cross car rigidity. So we get a lot of rigidity from this um, rear brace in the back. And then we add an aluminum cross car beam here to give us a lot of rigidity in the front, but it's a, it's a marvel of engineering for sure. And obviously lightweight. So two technicians could pick this up and put it into a jig for bonding. You don't need a lot of robots to pick up really heavy metal stuff and position it and put it everywhere. Um, you know, this is uh, human positionable, no welding, no painting. It makes for a much friendlier manufacturing environment. And the structural part of this vehicle is just this, the top spider up there, that roll hoop, this cowl, and the two sides. That's it. Six parts and done. Wow. So all the, all the black that we see is carbon fiber. So how about the white pieces up here? Uh, the white pieces are actually glass. So uh, in a lot of areas, you don't need super rigid uh, composites like this. Uh, you can get away with, um, you know, I wouldn't call them more cosmetic components, but uh, less stiff components. And obviously it's much, much cheaper to do it out of fiberglass and do it out of carbon fiber. Uh, so it saves us money, uh, doesn't add uh, any significant weight. Um, and you know, this is, this is how it's done. Now again, this is not a production model, but let's just take a quick look here on the interior. A couple things will be pretty much as you see here, you'll have a rear view camera mirror up here because the early models will come with a full solar panel back, which is the way I'd option it as well. And again, you have your traditional mirrors that are mechanical and physical, but you also have the cameras. The screen is a little bit small to fit nicely in the cabin and you're gonna have some controls on the steering wheel and I think it's gonna be just one color. But the biggest change on the interior actually has to do with the manufacturing improvement and that's around the gear tunnel. As you can see here, the old gear tunnel and gear tunnels like this that run the length of the car are largely for rigidity and for structural integrity. And this one is so massive that it didn't leave as much room. But check out this. Thanks to their new forged carbon fiber manufacturing process, this gear tunnel is reduced that much and the integrity is retained in other components and stamps along the entirety of the tub. And as a result now, that center console area is going to be a lot larger for storage and 
whatever else. Also, the passengers are moved closer inboard to maximize space, especially on the walls and just a million small little things. But by and large, it's the car that you all love and it's just getting closer and closer to being ready for manufacturing. Again, this is the Gamma. This is not the full final production, which would go all the way over. But let's take a look at the space back here. I love that. That's just the coolest thing. Again, even though this is a pretty small, compact car, it is absolutely massive back here. About seven feet, I think. And um, if you have this all the way up for camping, we've shown that in previous episodes where you have like camping accessories and everything else. But this is a really practical car. But what do you think? Would you buy the Aptera? I'd love to know. Sound off in the comments below. And maybe we'll see one of these things at an Everything Electric show in the near future. All right. That is a quick look at the updates happening at Aptera. And if you haven't, thank you so much for watching.